Yeah, thank you so much for joining me today, uh, Triton. So I know that you are a busy person, but you gave us this time uh, to talk to you. So basically, how many people are in the UK's uh, Fumbuta uh, in Tuasa program? So uh, in last season, 1919 to 20, we had about 9,800 households, which was piloting the Fumbuta program. So that was testing it out. This season, next season that's just coming up, we're hoping to expand that to 250,000 households um, in, in Manika land, Mashvingo, and Moshona land. So tell us a bit about these programs. Who is actually benefiting? So the whole idea of Mfutsa is to sort of really target those small farmers, smallholders who have very sort of limited patches of land uh, and really help them get the most out of that land and increase that productivity especially during these times of erratic climate. So obviously for the last few years in Zimbabwe, we've seen you know, periods of drought. So we're targeting smallholders um, who probably have about one sixteenth, sixteenth of, um, of a, a hectare. Uh, and what we really want to do is ta uh, target those households with a package of seeds and improved agricultural practices to really help them get the most out of those small plots and ensure that they have enough food for their families. How do you identify the families? So we, we're looking for fa families that have about a sixteenth of a hectare of land, so a small household plot next to their, to their, or close to their homes, and also farmers that also have a little bit of capital to buy some of the inputs, obviously seeds and some fertilizer, and those households with enough land to cultivate the, the plot carefully, because there's some quite, um, some, some good guidelines that we've, been, we've developed to make sure that we get the most out of the, the, out of the land. So in, in terms of the impact of this program, tell us a bit about it. So we're quite excited by the, by the program because for a limited amount of inputs and some very careful cultivation, um, we sort of see that a household can probably secure about 33 weeks of cereal. So almost enough for a household to get through, through the year, about two thirds of the year. And that's a family of six. So, you know, obviously in these difficult times, hopefully improving food security for those people that previously had to buy food in the market, had to buy cereals in the market. Now we see that uh, when uh, people are engaged in these programs, they've got small plots and they use some rudimentary implements. Exactly what, what do they do in terms of planting, whatever they're planting? So, yeah, so, so for the even FUTSA programs developed a very careful set of guidelines, which includes firstly sort of um, mapping out the plots to ensure proper spacing between the plants. So um, a number of rows are, are dug and then along those rows, the farmer will cultivate a small pit, um, which is then going to sort of where the seed and the fertilizer and the organic fertilizer will be sort of put in. Uh, and then that's covered with, with topsoil and watered carefully through the season. So a package of inputs and then some very careful guidelines. And the most important bit of this new technology is the, the mulching that happens. So this is covering the cultivated plot with residues from either livestock or grasses or leaves to really lock in that moisture and to prevent and to, to bring in more organic matter to make that soil more fertilizer. But it's locking in the moisture during these areas, during these seasons of erratic rainfall, that's the real key. And talking about the yields in such kind of uh, cultivation methods, how yeah, good so, are the yields? So we've seen through, so one of the, the, the great things about this, this technology on this, this package of practices is it's been very carefully tested in the farmer's fields. So not necessarily developed on the research station, but really tested in farmer's fields. And in those pilots last year with those 9,000 households, we see, saw some of those um, families realising about eight um, tonnes per hectare of a yield. And if you compare that to uh, land that's cultivated without these careful practices and without this careful mulching and, and watering, we see around 0.5 to 1 uh, tonne per hectare. So really significant increases in the yields that um, farmers are realising. What type of crops are actually uh, grown, you know, using these techniques? Yeah. So at the moment, we're focusing on maize, which is obviously the staple of um, preferred crop of, of most Zimbabweans. Um, but there's the, the principles of the technology, so the kind of careful use of organic matter, the mulching, and the right combination of organic and inorganic fertilizer. Those principles 
can be applied to many other crops. So we'd like to see them probably extended to small grains, such as millets and sorghum, particularly in those drier areas, but also legume crops. So that whole package of you know, proper spacing, proper fertilizing, proper weeding is, is really a technology that can be applied to all crops. And that will be the next step. Can you say that your program is actually uh, environmentally friendly? Uh, we, yes, we can. I think the, the whole kind of background to the program has been developed with uh, um, resilience to climate change in mind and with you know, maximum use of inorganic and organic fertilizers together in a careful combination. So using um, mulches, um, leaving crop residues in the field to sort of um, fertilize the soil, reducing chemical fertilizer to the to the minimum level that's effective. So, you know, reducing that down as much as possible, combining it with organic fertilizer so we get a real synergy between the two. All of these kind of principles are about kind of improving the environment, but also building resilience to, to climate change. Now, when we look at uh, this kind of uh, method that we're using, is it for only poor farmers or any other Zimbabwean farmer can actually use these methods? So, so the particular package of Umfutsa has been developed for a particular farmer with, a, as I said, with the kind of one uh, 16th of a hectare of land. So it's targeted at the smallholder and actually the, the very clear guidance that's been developed in terms of how you lay out the plot, the spacing, how you apply the, the mulching and the inorganic and organic fertilizers. That's all been developed with smallholders in mind. But the principles behind that, um, behind the agriculture uh, as I said, there's kind of combinations of inorganic and organic fertilizer, the careful mulching, um, the kind of minimum tillage principles are all kind of more widely applicable. And we very much would like to see them being taken up by larger farmers and commercial farmers too. Now, looking at uh, what is happening in terms of rainfall, you know, uh, uh, where are the areas where you are targeting and how is the rainfall pattern in those specific areas? So, um, so at the moment, the, the program, the Livelihoods um, so, uh, Food Security Program, LFSP, is targeting Manika land, Mashona and uh, Midlands with this particular um, practice and the, the Mfutsa package. Um, and in those areas, we're seeing, I think, uh, seasons where rainfall is, is more erratic, um, you get prolonged dry spells, and, and you obviously in the last two or three years have had lower than average rainfalls. We're also with a, a second program, the uh, Zimbabwe Resilience Building Fund, which works with our European Union and Swedish partners targeting drier areas across other parts of Zimbabwe, where we're also taking some of the principles behind this um, package of uh, practices and encouraging farmers to, to test those uh, principles out too. So targeting different ecosystems and trying to adapt um, the package to those different ecosystems to, to basically deal with the increased erraticness of rainfall that's the main problem for farmers yeah and i'm told that we've got uh, a similar program in matabene land called intuasa uh, that, somewhere. yeah that's right so that's the, the zimbabwe resilience building fund which is you know obviously those areas are much drier very risky for farmers and in those areas too we really want to work beyond maize and try and sort of look at some of the opportunities for small grains millet and sorghum which are much more drought tolerant uh, and able to kind of cope, cope, cope with this erratic rainfall. And there's some people who argue that, uh, you know, these plots are very small, you know, and they need some tractors instead of somebody, you know, planting in these holes, you know. What, what, what do you say to that? So I think, um, I think what we overall, the overall labour requirement to sort of take um, the cultivation from land preparation to to planting, to weeding, to uh, obviously fertilizer application and harvesting, the overall labor required is, is actually lower than for sort of you know, traditional ways of, of farming. One of the, the biggest um, requirements of labor is those digging of pits. So obviously at the beginning of each season, digging individual pits is quite a laborious, um, uh, sort of has, has, you know, requires quite a lot of labor. But in subsequent seasons, you can then reuse those those, um, those, those same pits. So it does require some investment up front. We've sort of made sure that's um, not beyond the, require, beyond the sort of um, abilities of, of the average smallholder farmer. And then in subsequent seasons, that reduction in what's uh, labor that's needed is quite significant. And I guess there's a lot of money that has been poured in here by the UK government and other partners. Tell us a bit about that. 
So we've yeah we've been funding the the livelihoods uh, food security program in these in these provinces for the last four years, working with the Food and Agricultural Organization uh, and also working with the Government Extension Service and Agritex. So we've been funding the program for the last four years, uh, moving into the final year of the program at the moment. And obviously that expansion to 250,000 households, uh, if you take a, an average of household of five to six, hopefully reaching around a million people. It's been a significant impact for the UK over the last five years and vital to supporting agriculture uh, in Zimbabwe. What is your last word? My last word. My last word is uh, that this is, for me, this is really exciting, actually. It's a really um, carefully developed package of practices that's been developed with farmers using their knowledge too, and really combines efficiently those use of input, those external inputs and traditional uh, materials that are traditionally available. And I think in the economic climate that we see with all the difficulties, the more we can do be to we can do to be efficient, smarter use of inputs, reduce the cost to farmers and be resilient to climate change, then we really have a way forward.